Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can integrate Docker with Wazoo to give us insight into our containers and as well as commands that can be run to interact with containers. Um, what I, I do wanna highlight something with this video is not, is it is not a deep dive into Docker and a deep dive into the ins and outs of Docker and how Docker works and how containers work and all the abstraction that takes place uh, with Docker. So uh, this is not the video for that. Uh, there are a ton of tutorials and intros already done on YouTube. Uh, I think the network check guy has a good one. Um, and yeah, there, there are a ton of t blogs and videos around Docker. Um, so if you guys are unfamiliar with it, I strongly urge you guys to kind of get a basic understanding of what Docker is, uh, the benefits of Docker, and the challenges with monitoring and getting security visibility into Docker containers. And so we'll hope to use Wazoo to get insight into our Docker containers. Um, so stick around and we'll jump into it. All right, so a very, very, very basic intro into into Docker and why do we need to monitor Docker? Well, we, we need insight into containers and as well as Docker exec commands can be used to get, let's say, a bash session into a container. So the, the beauty of Docker and what makes these containerized solutions so powerful is that you can spin up you can spin up what you can think of as another server within a server. Um, so it takes abstraction to, to a new level. And uh, to be honest, I am no expert within Docker uh, by whatsoever, um, but it is a really fascinating technology that a lot of companies are starting to integrate uh, within their environments. And I think will probably be the next big technical innovation in terms of how uh, organizations run their applications. Uh, it's really flexible, it's really easy uh, to run, and combining it with something like Kubernetes, uh, you get a lot of automation and high resiliency and high availability um, that can be a challenge when you're running either a physical server or a virtual machine. So Docker gives us the ability to spin up a container, and this container could be a Ubuntu operating system that's running Nginx, for example, where my host server is actually like a CentOS 7 box, right? And so it, it allows us to create kind of what you can think of VMs within a server, uh, which is really cool and is really powerful technology. However, the, the problem comes getting visibility into these containers. These containers can still be compromised and there are a good amount of POCs that demonstrate people breaking out of containers to get onto the host server itself, right? Which is something we want to avoid. So the, the trouble is, how do we get insight into what Docker is doing, right? And so that's what we will use Wazoo for to start to explore. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and install a install the Docker software onto my server here. So I need to do that first. So I'll run these few commands here that are just within the Docker uh, install documentation for CentOS. Um, so pretty basic commands. There's really only three we have to load here. Um, so I installed a yum utils package and then I am grabbing their repo um, that will hold the software that I want. So I'll then scroll down. Um, you can specify different repos if you want. I'm just going with the ones that, that they suggest. It's the latest uh, stable version. So I'll then scroll down and just grab this command and run a yum install. And we can see it's bringing in uh, what makes Docker Docker. So. Go ahead and say yes to that. We'll go ahead and install it. And then I'll do a, a quick test. 
Um, we'll just do a Docker run hello world to make sure everything is working correctly. And I'll use the power of editing to skip ahead here. All right, and we have Docker running. Let's go ahead and run a Docker run hello world just to verify that it's working correctly. And we get this hello from Docker back. Um, so we now know that Docker is installed and seems to be running correctly. Um, so that's good. So we now have Docker installed. Uh, now let's see how we can monitor Docker with Wazoo. Um, so there's a few things we need to do. Uh, what's nice, uh, Wazoo actually has the Docker Woodle. Um, so similar if you saw my last video with OS Query Woodle, uh, they have built this functionality with the default install of Wazoo, so we don't need to configure anything on the back end. Uh, we just need to set up our configuration to take advantage of this, of this feature. All right, so uh, just a few very basic commands if I run it to interact with Docker and with my containers. If I do a Docker PS, um, I see that I don't have any containers running currently, right? So if we want to go ahead and let's maybe install uh, Nginx. I say Docker install Nginx, and this will kind of give you guys inside into the power of docker and why it's so easy uh, and awesome uh, so let me just go into this nginx, nginx hub and i'll just go ahead and run a docker pool nginx so if i go ahead and run that we see i pulled an nginx image uh, from the docker public repo which is uh, what you see within my browser here and now we can actually go ahead and run nginx so if I just copy this docker run command start that up oh, okay so I need to change I'll say demo because I did this beforehand so I made sure it worked okay so I just needed to change the name um, but it would work for you guys and now if I do a docker ps again we see my container has spun up and it's running Nginx. Uh, it's listening on port, port 80, right? So pretty cool. So if we go back to our diagram here, why would I try to use Microsoft Edge to open this? You know, that's the problem with Windows. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so what we just spun up was our Docker container. Um, so. I have two here because you can spin up multiple containers, um, but we just, we're on a CentOS box, right? So if I cat Etsy uh, OS release, you can see we're running on a CentOS, CentOS 8 box, which is my host server that I have in this diagram. And I just spun up Nginx within a new container within Docker. And this is has its own operating system. so. What I can do is actually get into this with a docker exec bash. So I can actually get a shell into this. So uh, I need to give it the name. So I think it, it should just be engine X. Uh, oh, maybe I'll try the, let me try the container ID. Yep, and here we go. So I now have a shell into my nginx image and as you can see uh we are logged in as root under this container right so we're now uh <laughs> kind of an inception of of um of servers um and i'm now have a shell within the container that is running on this host so if i do like a cat let's see password uh we can see that i have the nginx user on here within my container right and i can and i can dump those out i could let's see what operating system this is running on and this is actually running on a debian 10 right so so this is actually a good example i am running nginx on a operating system that is different from my centos 7 uh, sorry centos 8 host server right so that's that's a very, and it's maybe really confusing to you guys right now, but that, that demonstrates the power of Docker, right? And, 
And now I am in a shell within this container. So if I do an exit, I'm back onto my host server that is running Docker, right? So pretty cool. So, and as you can see, these containers can become compromised and someone could download even an image. Like you saw how easy it was for me to run this, uh, how easy it was to run this Docker pull Nginx, right? Someone could contain, someone within a known repo could create their own image that can be pulled with Docker and it could be, you know, it could be a crypto miner or some type of malware that then tries to work to break out of its container and get onto the host server itself. And we need a way to, to monitor what's being pulled. Um, if someone's running a Docker exec to get a shell onto a container like like with what I did here. You know, your your app teams really shouldn't be logging into containers that are on the host, uh, that are running on a host. There really shouldn't be any need for that. Um, so we need to get insight into someone or something maybe doing something that maybe trying to leverage Docker to ultimately get to break out and get onto our host server. And we can use Wazoo to do that. So, so in order to use the Docker Woodle, we actually need to install a pip. We need to run a pip install command. So, uh, and uh, Python pip is kind of like a uh, package manager for Python uh, in a way. Uh, it's pretty powerful and pretty easy to use. And we will take advantage of the Docker uh, package that you can install with Python pip. So I have, uh, I think it's just Python 2 on this box right now. Yeah, it is. Um, I would strongly encourage uh, Python 3 because Python 2 is end of life. Um, so in your actual environment, uh, you would run this with Python 3. Uh, but in this demo, I'm just using Python 2. Uh, and so I will do a yum install python2 pip. Uh, if you're running Python 3, you would just replace this with python3 pip. And so I will go ahead and install that. And now I should be able to run a pip2. And okay, good. So it looks like the binaries are there and good to go. So now I'll just run a pip2 install docker and uh, I've already done this, so all of these are already satisfied, but you would pull, well, I can just do a pip2, uninstall docker, proceed yes, and now pip2 install docker, and it has now installed for me. So it's successfully installed docker, and that's it. Um, so now we need to enable the Woodle. So let me go ahead and tail get that tail going for that. And I will again use the group configuration to uh, push this out rather than doing it on the server itself. Uh, so I'll go ahead and edit the group configuration here. And I will paste that in. And yeah, so similar to OS query, it's now just a Docker listener. And why we needed to, in to run the, the pip install Docker is because it uses Python, uh, whichever version, two or three, to interact with, to take advantage of this pack, this Docker pip package. So uh, the Wazoo guys have taken advantage of this under the hood um, to be able to relay all these results back to us. And so uh, to enable this functionality. And so that's just the one prereq that we need to have configured. All right, so let's go ahead and step through these blocks. So the interval is set to one minute. So that's just if the Docker listener were to fail for whatever reason, it would try again in a minute with a max of five attempts before just giving up. Um, and you would see that alert uh, within Wazoo and we'll see that here in a sec. Uh, run on start is set to no. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to yes. So this is just when the Wazoo agent starts up, um, it, will start the Docker listener Woodle as well. And then disabled is set to no. So that looks good. So I'll go ahead and save that. And this will push out and the agent will restart. And then we should see the Docker listener start up here in a sec. So we can see it's trying to start and it's, we see this starting to, 
<laughs> their grammar is a little messed up here, but starting to listen to, uh, to Docker events. So that looks good. Um, if we give it a sec, just to make sure that no other errors come out. All right, so that all looks good. Um, so now let's go ahead again. Uh, Wazoo, within the Wazoo app, within Kibana, there is a Docker uh, listener module already, which is nice. Uh, again, if you don't have that enabled, go into settings, modules, and if you scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll have the Docker listener. I think by default it's not enabled, so you'll just need to select that checkbox there. And then go into modules and then select Docker listener. And you can see that we're actually already starting to get some results, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and manually test this. Uh, let's see if we can trigger some alerts. So let's see, I have this container running. Uh, let me just go ahead and kill this container. Uh, I think it's just Docker kill and then give the container ID. And now if I run a Docker PS, yeah, we see nothing is running, so good. So. Let's go ahead and spin up the Nginx again and let's see if we catch it. Um, so I will just run that similar docker run command. Um, I will just say demo2 because it will gripe at me. Demo2. All right, and if I do a docker ps, we now see that this new image, or sorry, we see that this new container has now been spun up. And let's see if we reflect that within our alerts here. So if I go into events, um, and sure enough, we see Docker start. We see container demo2 nginx has been started. So this will alert us now when someone starts a container with Docker, right? And we get some metadata around that, right? So we can see who maintains the container, which is, or who maintains the image actually, which is also really nice. So like we know Nginx owns this in Nginx image. If this was like, you know, this could be like Hacker Incorporated or something, right? As a maintainer of this image. Or if we realize, an, or if we see an image that we aren't familiar with, like maybe it has an obscure name, like, you know, Crypto Miner or something like that, or obscure names such as like just some random string. Uh, string of characters that are put together, right? That that could be concerning, and we could then say, "Well, why did this container just get spun up?" Right? And so, so we now have insight into containers that are being spun up on in on a host, right? And let's see now. Let's run that bash command again and see uh, Docker exec. Here we go, and see what alert we generate here. So this would be me now getting a shell onto a container, right? So I'm on this guy, if I cat uh, Etsy OS release, uh, we see him on, it's the running Debian 10 again. And if we go back to Wazoo and refresh that, we should see our alert. And sure enough, here we go. So docker it, or sorry wazoo is spitting back out to us hey we see a shell has just been started on demo2 nginx and no user should really be needing to access the containers and get a shell session into a container right so that would be something that could be a flag and then we could do our appropriate investigation um, similarly if i were to do like you know instead of bash maybe i want to do cat uh, let's say Etsy password. So, so using Docker exec, I can run any command, right? So here I'm catting, I'm listing out the contents of the Etsy password file within this Docker, or sorry, within this Nginx container, right? And as we can see, I've just now dumped that out, right? Well, we want to also be alerted on something like that. And that's where the Docker listener uh, really benefits us. So if I refresh again, we should also see that alert come through. And sure enough, we see command launched in container. We see me trying to list out the contents of Etsy password, right? And no, <laughs> no legitimate user should, uh, should be trying to interact with our containers like that, right? Which is really powerful. Let's also 
grab a let's grab some other image uh, would be something cool uh, Postgres okay we could grab Postgres so if I run a docker pool Postgres so let's we're now pulling this new Postgres image that we can start and start within a container. So I'll run a Docker pull Postgres. We can see me reaching out. Docker is reaching out to the repo to grab the Postgres image. All right, and so we now have that image and let's see what we've generated within Wazoo. So if I come back, I will go ahead and refresh we should see me pulling down this new image. And here we go. We see an image and the action we get is a pool, right? So, and then we see image or repository Postgres pulled. So sure enough, we get an alert for us pulling down that image, um, which is really insightful as well, right? We still want to know what images are, these containers are made up of, right? So that they're not anything uh, malicious and so for example we could see a malicious actor pull down a image that they've built that has you know malware pre-installed with it and they could pull that down and then and then I will start the Postgres instance right so I'll now create a container that is made up of this Postgres image right so if I run that we now see that this container is spinning up Right? And if I do, again, if I do a Docker PS, we see that now the Postgres image is now made up within this container, right? So this now gives us total insight into users that are pulling Docker images and then starting them up. So if I go back into our events tab here and refresh, we should see a Docker start, and sure enough we do, for Postgres. So we see, if we expand this out, we see that I started the Postgres uh, container. So I started a container with the Postgres image, right? Which gives us a lot of insight, which is really nice to have. And we also see when I try to run commands within a container, we get alerted on that as well. We also get alerts for network related uh, alerts within Docker as well, right? So we can see if now, new network configuration changes have been made with this image. And we get all this with Wazoo um, and is pretty awesome. There's really just a few things that we need to enable and uh, just really the one prereq with the pip install Docker that gives us the ability to see what's going on within our Docker environment, which is really powerful and is really crucial, especially as more and more companies are starting to adopt containerization and this new technology that is really powerful, but from a security perspective, we need to make sure that we are prepared to still get the visibility and insight into you know who's spinning up a container, what images are these containers made up of, is someone trying to run malicious commands uh, within a container, right? Now we're starting to get that insight with Wazoo, these containers are not foolproof. To think that someone could not break out of a container is not true. Um, and hence as to why we need to make sure that we can monitor and properly alert on malicious actions that can be taken by within containers and, uh, and by Docker. And the Wazoo uh, Docker listener Woodle gives us the ability to, to do so. And I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, as always, please leave any comments, concerns, or questions in the comment section below. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next video.